Amen. I want all of our fathers to stand this morning. Everybody that's a father in the house, stand. Amen. And be recognized. Amen. Appreciate our fathers today. Amen. Brother David, Brother Eric just stepped out. Amen. Amen. Joshy. Amen. Good to have Josh. Got his daughters with him today in church. Appreciate them being here. Bodie. Amen. Brother Roger. Amen. The Jersey Jester back there. Amen. 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 Jerry, Ray, Bill, Mark, Brother Weed. Amen. Appreciate all of you. Thank you for standing. Let's give them a hand. Amen. I got a little some got a little something for the fathers after service today. Amen. So make sure you don't leave. Got a little special something for you. Appreciate them. Amen. Just thank the Lord for our fathers. Amen. Amen. Thank God. You know that when fathers come to church, and I read this statistic last year, but I'll rehash it because it's Father's Day and it's worth saying. But when 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 a child in the house comes to church, they're the only one in that house that comes to the house of God. Uh, there is like a seven or eight percent chance. I have to go back and look at my statistics. I know it's very low that anybody else in the house will ever come to church. If mom comes to church, that percentage jumps up to about 30 percent. Amen. If moms are the only one in the house that comes to church, there's about a 30 percent chance that the rest in the house or the kids especially will come to church. But guess what happens when dad comes to church? When dad comes to church and gets in church, there is a 93% chance that the rest of the house will follow. Amen. Can you realize that dads are important? Amen. Dads are important. It's important that they come to church. Amen. Your family is looking up to you. They're looking to you for that guidance and that leadership. And I realize that in no, matter, no matter what setting you're speaking in, as I say at Mother's Day, there are homes that have single parents in those homes, and they do the best that they can do, and God helps them. Amen. But, you know, God intended for there to be moms and dads in every home. I know circumstances are different in some places for some because of what they've had to go through. Amen. But when... But when, when men come to church, my, what a great uh, impact it has on their family. Amen. It has a great, great, great impact on their family. And uh, that's what I want to talk to you today. Amen. I want to talk just a little bit this morning on a reminder to be a role model. Amen. A reminder to be a role model. Proverbs chapter 20, verse number 7. I want to read one verse of Scripture to you this morning and talk to you for a little bit. Amen. This Father's Day. And uh, just follow after the Lord. Just thought that, amen, the Lord laid on my heart last night as I began to study along these lines. Amen. Proverbs 20 and 7. If you're able this morning, stand. And let's read this one verse of Scripture. Proverbs 20. Chapter 20, verse number 7, if you have it, say amen. The just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Amen. Amen. The just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him him. Amen. Thank you for standing this morning. You may be seated. Amen. Can I get just a little monitor up here on this pulpit monitor, if you please? My voice is not the best today. Amen. Amen. A reminder to be a role model. There's five things that you'll never hear fathers saying. Five things. Amen. One thing you'll never hear a father saying, or a man for that uh, uh, for, for that uh, reason, we'll say, uh, well, how about that? I'm lost. I guess I'll have to stop and ask for directions. Amen. Here's something else you'll never hear a father saying. Here, son, here's a credit card and the keys to my new car. Go enjoy yourself. Not going to happen. Amen. Here's another thing you probably won't hear a father saying. Well, your mother and I are going away for the weekend. Y'all might want to consider having a big party in the house while we're gone. You won't hear a father saying that either. Amen. You'll never hear a father say, well, why would you want to go out and get a job for her? I've made plenty of money for you to go spend and blow. Uh, you'll never hear a father say that. Amen. You know something else you'll never hear a father say? 
Father's Day, ah, don't worry about that. It ain't no big deal. Amen, amen. Father's Day, amen. Mothers are probably, mothers probably say that. And I said that to my wife. She said, you know, she said, we, we mamas, we love to be doted on year-round, not just on Mother's Day. Amen. I think fathers feel the same way. We, th- we love to be told that we're loved more than just on Father's Day. It's a big deal. Amen. To recognize mothers and fathers. Amen. There's no greater blessing than for children to be surrounded by men who have God's call upon their lives. I'm not uh, talking about a calling to a professional or a vocational ministry, but I'm referring to men who have heard God's call to be men of the cross. Amen. Men who are not afraid of their faith. Men who are not ashamed to announce to the world that they serve a living God. Amen. When you study the scripture, amen, the Bible puts a primary responsibility, amen, on a godly biblical man to be in the family. And I think that that may be why. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that that's why men and husbands and fathers and masculinity has been under such an attack in the American culture. Amen. Uh, Very often in the media, in movies and sitcoms, the husband or the father that plays that role and acts that role normally is portrayed as just this bumbling fool that has no clue and he's being run over by everybody in the house. And I'm, I, I believe, I say I believe, that I, I will firmly believe that that has an effect on society because they see, <clears throat> they see this TV dad or sitcom dad that acts that way and they think, well, that's the way dads are supposed to act. And if kids see that, they'll say, well, that's the way I'm supposed to treat my dad. I'm supposed to tell him what I'm going to do. I'm supposed to tell him how I'm going to act instead of respecting him as an authority figure in my life. Amen. Now, I, I love my son. I love the energy that my son has. I, don't, I wouldn't have it any other way. I love that, and I see things in him that remind me exactly of me. Now, Sister Teresa and Sister Judy's not here this morning, but they got tickled uh, last year at some point in a service, and I asked my service, what are you laughing at? They said, we were watching a younger version of you because they remember me when I was that age. I've got a picture on my phone that I've took of Sawyer and myself side by side. One picture is of Sawyer. The other picture is of me at Greg and Teresa's wedding, and we're the same age, and we look a lot alike. And I guarantee you we acted a lot alike, full of energy. I mean, I constantly as a child was, was uh, I sat with my mom. I was never allowed to sit behind my mom, but I always sat with her. She said, you can sit with me. You can sit on the front row with your dad or somewhere in between, but you'll never, ever sit behind me in church because I can't know what you're doing. And so many times she would correct me and pop me and, and uh, you know, that was one thing in church. It was humiliating. But the worst thing was if I went, when I got on to a church and I got home after church, amen, that was worse. Amen. That when, when, when daddy would, would yank that belt and I'd hear it hit every belt loop as it come out. Pop, 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 pop. He yanked that belt out so quick I'd hear it every belt. And I knew what was about to happen. There was no discussing it. There was no talking about it. There was no stopping it. Amen. And, uh, you know, I, I've, I've come home before and got in trouble with the house, and, and Mama would take that dreaded privet hedge switch that she had honed to just a fine edge, and she'd get a hold of me. Now, I could even manage that. It hurt. It hurt bad, but I could manage that. But if it ever got so bad, she said, I'm not going to spank you. I'm just going to let your daddy do it when he gets home. Then the scene changed. Amen. The way I felt about things changed because there was an authority figure in my life that didn't put up with junk. Amen. Amen. He was a role model. He didn't put up with that. Amen. But yet, he would let me know real quick like, and even now, (coughs) my wife can get on to my son. She can look at him. She can say whatever to him, and sometimes he may pay attention, and sometimes he may do it not. But if I can ever get his attention... It, things change. His countenance changes because he knows. Amen. My children know. My daughters know. They know what will happen. Amen. Because, you know, moms are just loving and they just kindly 
you know, they, 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 they give a lot, but dads are usually and should be that stern voice of authority. Amen. I've told my children repeatedly as I've raised them, I love them, and I am their friend, but before I am their friend, I am their father. Amen. Before I am one that will give them anything they want, I will be that voice. I'll be that obstacle. I'll be that resistance. I'll be that voice of authority in their life. Amen. Men face tremendous temptations in our society today. There's, there's the temptation of all the vices that are out there from, from, from just the temptation of the, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and, and all of the things that go on with, with drinking and drugs and tobacco and everything that goes on and pornography, all of the vices that is there to offer. There is a temptation in a lot of places for men to, to cut corners in order to make money. All these pressures and many, many more are against men today. The feminist movement puts pressure on men. I was one doctor that I read behind this week said that one of the greatest problems in America today is the feminization of men. Amen. Just put that in terms we understand. They're trying to make men a bunch of sissies. Man, I don't know if a boy alive likes to be called a sissy. When I was coming up, that's fighting words. I mean, you say you call another boy a sissy coming up, that was fighting words. We, we, was, ready to, we was ready to roll our sleeves up and ball our fists up and bloody somebody's nose because you didn't do that. You could, you could say a lot of things. You didn't call nobody a sissy. But that, amen, it, that, it is the pressure that society has put on men. And sadly, there's so many that go along with that. There's an effort by a lot of people, you know, nowadays to make men look like women with the trans movement. I know we're in the middle of Pride Month and all that other stuff. I don't believe in it. I still take a stand against it publicly. Amen. I don't believe in that. Amen. The feminist movement and that movement, the alphabet people are trying to sell America on the idea that there is no difference between a man and a woman. But you just know there's these stubborn facts of biology and science that just refuse to go away. Time magazine uh, a few years ago put out an article about the differences in men and women and it discussed Men and women were different. But in that article, in a certain place, it said they figured that the reason men and women were so different was because they was born that way. That's the only way that somebody is born that way. Amen. I'm trying not to take this avenue this morning. I'm trying just to stay on the edge of it. Amen. But men are born men or male. Women are born female. That's the only way that they are born. Amen. Amen. And, I, and, and, and this is the thing. Society has, has got this messed up. But you see, men and women's brains are wired differently. It's just like shopping. When women go shopping, it becomes a social event. For men, we go get what we want, we get out and we come back home or we tell our wife what to pick up, usually. Amen. Men and women are different. You see that on the playgrounds, even at a young age. Get out there on the playground at school and get up a good uh, uh, a rowdy game of kickball or dodgeball or volleyball. Boys will choose based on talent. Girls will choose based on their friendship. I know there's small exceptions. Don't look at me like that. But for the most part, amen, I know. You find a young boy that's talented and athletic, I mean, he can be good friends with, with a guy that, that ain't very, but when they go to choosing sides, amen, they, they might eventually get to him, but he's going to pick somebody that's going to help him win. Them girls going to get somebody because they're buddies and they're friends. Amen. I, I, I've seen this growing up. You know, we get out there and get to play and get to play in a, a, a whatever it was. You know, we'd make up games. We'd get to play him. A young boy would get hurt and say he's on the field to play. That boy would get hurt. We'd drag him out of the way so the game could go on. But you let a girl get hurt, it was time to call 911. Amen. Because they would stop and hover around. It's just the mentality of, of the way, you know, rough and tumble boys will be boys. That's a, that's, that's a true statement. Men and women, we, we have to admit, are just different because God made us that way. It's the same way with husbands and wives. There is things in a relationship, amen, that wives bring to that that a husband cannot. There's things that a husband brings to that that a wife cannot, but God made 
made that to complement each other. That's why he designed it that way. Amen. And I want to talk today about the role of a man in the family. Amen. Number one, they need to be a role model in love. Amen. You didn't have to come to church today to know that. You know you're supposed to love your family. Amen. I'm sure that you love your family. But I want to talk to you about what is really involved in loving your family. Amen. I know uh, when you read uh, in Ephesians 5, it tells a man how to love his family. Amen. And three times... In the verses there in Ephesians, it says, Husband, love your wives. Men ought to love wives as their own body. He said, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. <coughs> but I like what he said, Amen, where he said, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church. Amen. We love our family like Jesus loved the church. How did Jesus love the church? The love of Jesus for his church was a selfless, sacrificial love. Amen. He loved the church. He loved sinners. He loved you and he loved me that he was willing to sacrifice his life on a cross. Amen. And give it for us. Amen. That's how much he loves us and how much a man is supposed to love his family. Amen. It's a sacrificial kind of love. Amen. It's not like trying to, to buy the love of a family by giving them things. That's not it. Amen. My dad, I thought, gave us more than we ever should have had growing up. But looking back on it, I realized that it really wasn't a whole lot. I thought it was. I thought we was rich growing up. I didn't realize we was poor because we was happy and we was took care of and we had what we needed. But dads, when you buy your family things, nothing wrong with buying your family family things, but you'll never buy love from your family. You're not going to barter with them for love. You do this and I love you. Amen. Uh, and I'll do this for you and you love me. No, no, no. Amen. It's not a conditional love. I'll love you if, but it's a sacrificial love. And let me tell you this. Love is primarily a verb. Amen. It's not just something that you feel, but it's something that you can do. Amen. It's a decision. Amen. You decide to love your wife. You decide to love your children. A conscious decision. A sacrificial love. I, I love it. I, I love it when I get around my girls and my family and I do things sometimes and I don't do it for their, their adoration at all. And, 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 but I, and I'm thankful that, that, that through the men that I grew up in, hey man, granddaddy that was a farmer on one side, I had a grandpa on the other side houses and built cabinets and then my dad was an engineer hey man and he, and, and he knew how to work and read blueprints and things like that I learned a lot from those I got uncles that were engineers Mechanics. I have an, uh, an uncle that, that, that worked in factories. I've got uncles that own business. And all of those growing up, all of that stuff, amen, I learned things. Amen, that's what you say, a jack of all trades but a master of none. There's a lot of things, Brother David, that we can do just because we learn to do that. And it just makes my heart swell with pride sometimes when I'll do something and I'll hear my girls talking off somewhere, maybe to somebody else, to among themselves, and i say, man, that daddy can fix anything. I just, I just, I mean, to a, to a dad, that just means the world. It really does. What does that? It don't mean that you literally can fix anything, but in the eyes of that child, you've done enough to where they say, "Hey, I can go to my dad if I have a problem, and he'll take care of it." Did you know that's an actual example of what our heavenly Father is? Amen. I tell folks all the time, my God can fix anything. Hallelujah. My God's a chain breaker. My God's a deliverer. My God's a healer. My God's a saver. Amen. He's able because he is a true example, amen, of how a father should be. Amen. Amen. Not only does the Bible say that a man is to love his family like Jesus loved as a church, but you know what? It kind of takes it on down a little bit. It says we're to love as we love our own bodies. Well, 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 men, how much do we love our own bodies? Amen. We take care of ourselves, don't we? Amen. We take care of ourselves. I'm trying to take no good care of myself. I'm trying to get rid of some of myself. Amen. I've already got rid of a lot of myself already. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to shed it down. Amen. I've got to kind of have some discipline in my life because I realize that the older I get, amen, I'm, just, I'm still just in my early 40s, but the older I get, 
Amen. I realize, amen, that there are things that, that come with not taking care of your body. Amen. And I know sometimes those things come whether you take care of it or not. Amen. But we love our bodies. We take care of ourselves. And he says we ought to take care, to love as we love our own body. We know we're going to get up every morning and we're going to put on clothes. We're going to make sure we got something in our stomach. We're going to make sure we, we drink us a cup of coffee. We're going to get something to eat. We're going we're, we're gonna, to we're gonna nurse that body. We're going to cherish it. We're going to take care of it. And that is exactly how we should do our families. Amen. We should, you know, family comes first. My wife's got a tag on the front of her car, and it says, family is everything. I believe she's had it on there just about ever since we got that vehicle. Family is everything. I, we, we were somewhere, I think we were somewhere, I was on, maybe down at the coast one time. We pulled in at a restaurant, got out, and uh, we was walking up, and I seen, I heard the scoff that come. There was a group of teenagers, I believe, and I don't know if anybody else heard this. I never said nothing to my wife about it. I was walking up, and I heard one of those teenagers go, huh, family is everything, huh? That was, their, that was kind of their, their attitude towards it. And uh, I'm not going to take nobody to task, but in my mind I said, absolutely it is. Yeah. Amen. If you didn't come up in that kind of environment, my heart goes out to you. Amen. But if you ever knew that in type of environment, you'd realize that family is everything. Amen. Love our family. We're to be a role model in love. We're also to be a role model in our leading. We are the spiritual leaders. Men are the spiritual leaders of the family. You're the one that sets the pace in your family. Amen. So what is involved in a man being the leadership of his family? Amen. Lordship. Amen. When you look at the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you see, amen, what exactly is required of a man. Amen. You cannot exercise authority unless you are under authority. Amen. If a man is going to exercise leadership in his family, he must understand the biblical principle of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen. We've got now, I, I believe the man has the hardest role in the entire family setting. I believe that. It's a man's responsibility to yield himself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That's why every man needs to be saved. Amen? Amen. Every man, every father needs to know who Jesus is. Not just for his own self, but for the saving of his family. Amen. It's important that every man have a relationship with Jesus Christ. How can you ever expect your children to call on God and to pray and to know how to pray and to be faithful to church and to love church and to love God if you don't show them how? Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's important that every dad be totally dedicated to the Lord. Amen. There's also, amen, a partnership in this. Ephesians 5.21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Family is a partnership between a husband and a wife. Can the church say amen? Family is a partnership between the husband and the wife. I want to echo something that I've said. I've already echoed it one time, but I'm going to say it again. Amen. Brother Enoch Snow said this the other week when he was preaching about families. Amen. He said when those kids growing up playing basketball, they'd get out there and get so much in the heat of the moment that sometimes they would forget who was on their team. They'd get to garden somebody on their other team, and they'd start saying, hold up, same team, same team to make sure that they didn't get confused on the basketball court. He said, I believe sometimes that husbands and wives ought to get a hold of each other and say, hey, same team, same team. We're a partnership. We're in this together. Amen. I know there's a lot of times, and kids do this kind of by default. They'll, they'll go to my mama, can I do this? Well, she'll go ask your daddy. He'll come, they'll come to dad, daddy, I'll do this. <laughs> go ask your mama. <laughs> you know, we, we do that. We pass the buck. But I can tell you this, amen, when mamas and daddies get on that same page, and, my, and, and, and I can tell you this, when my wife, they'll go to my wife and say, can I do this? She'll say no. And I'll hear her answer, but I won't be in the same room. And I'll hear them feet coming, daddy, daddy, can I do this? I say, what'd your mama say? She said no, I say no. Same team, partnership, 
Come on now. Don't create discord in your family by putting mamas and daddies against each other with kids in the house. That is a recipe for disaster. But realize that we are a partnership. Amen. Do you know there's some men that can run major corporations that can't run their family? Why is it that it seems like that majority, it does, it seems like a lot of times if you look into corporations and you look into businesses and, and especially large businesses and you look in the managers in those places, many of those are men that never could run their own families. I don't know why that is. Amen. Until I got to studying into it. Amen. This is what one writer said. He said, men that run companies and yet their families are a disaster. He said this, the man in his business is active, he's articulate, he's energetic, and he's really successful. Did you hear that? When it comes to work and business, he's active, he's articulate, he's energetic, and he's really successful. Now, I realize I'm preaching to a group this morning, but you realize I'm preaching to myself also. I'm not exempt from any of this. I'm never exempt from anything in this word. I'm just the messenger of God. All right? That's what a man is in business. But it says at home, he said he's inactive, he's inarticulate, he's lethargic, and he's withdrawn. He said men that will show up at those companies, and they come in every morning, and they're upbeat, and they're, hey, have you got this project? Have you got this done? Have you got this done? Hey, where are we at on this? What's going on? Because they, 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 they want to look good. They give that perception of everything is going great, and, and we're running this company, and people's patting on the back. You're doing a good job. You're doing a real good job. Everything, oh, boy, you're doing a real good job at running this company. And yet when they get home and they walk in that house, many times they're so wore out and they're so tired, they retreat to the newspaper, to the magazine, to the electronic devices, and to the recliner, sometimes to the office. Sometimes many of them never come home until late, late because they have to go by and get something to drink and stop by the bar. Partnership. Partnership. I know my wife has raised a large family. Amen. I know I work a lot of long hours. There's a lot of times I've come in and my wife has been tired and wore out because it's tough to raise a large family. It really is. Amen. But you know what? It takes both of us. It takes both of us. And sometimes, men, we need to be reminded that we are to be role models. Can, you, can the men say amen? amen? We need to be reminded that God expects these things of us. Amen. How many absentee fathers? I, I, I know that, that, that uh, if you look at statistics, there's, there's over a million children born in America every year out of wedlock. Did you know uh, there are a, a million unwed mothers every year? But you know that means there's that many, if not more, unwed fathers? You talk to brother, you, you, think it's, you think it's bad in America? I can tell you, you can talk to Brother David Trawick where he's at down in Royalton, Honduras, on the island of Royalton, and he'll tell you how high the percentage is of unwed mothers, and, and he calls them a, 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 a bum fathers that run around like they do. They'll have those kids, and then they'll run off. you got these mamas that are raising three and four kids from different daddies, and the off in and having fun and in jail and everything else and people say Brother Trawick's down there and all he's doing is just doing full time kids crusade. Brother Trawick sees the burden for a bunch of kids that don't have mamas and daddies and he's reaching out to them. You realize that, that those statistics are not that far off even in America. The society and the government has just hit it more. We've masked it with programs, and we've masked it with all this other stuff. And, friends, it's time, amen, for the church to not be silent about that. I know that some of us have large families to raise, but if you're able to make the difference in a child, if you're able to love a child and to love a grandchild, and you know what? There's something, and let me just say this this morning. I know it's Father's Day, but there's some great grandparents that come to church here that love their grandkids as much or more, amen, as they ever did their own kids because they want those grandkids to grow up and my heart is going out to you my prayers go out to you because there is an epidemic in America and kids are the victims but oh God would you raise up godly men and godly women and people that will stand in the gap and say I'm going to have a partnership and I'm going to do my best to raise these children and to love them and to show them about Jesus hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Amen. Then in Ephesians 5.23 says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, the Savior of the body. Amen. Notice that the Bible didn't say he was the head over the wife. He says the head of the wife. Amen. It's not a dictatorship. One man said, I'm not a dictator in my family. I'm the head tater. Amen. I'm not the dictator, I'm the head tater. The man is that source of protection and provision in that family. You know what Paul said to Timothy about that? He said, if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, faith and is worse than an infidel. Amen. It's important, amen, that we have that role in loving our family, amen, and in leading our family, but also that role model in lifting, encouraging our family. It's not our job, dads, to go in and if we see our kids, you know, down and out, just to continue to beat them on down to where they just feel worthless. That's not the way we ought to be. Amen. But if you look, amen, if it says husbands to love your own wife as Christ loved the church, amen, that he gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of the water by his word. Then he said that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, and that it should be holy and without blemish. You see how Christ lifts the church up? You see how Jesus lifts the church up? It should be holy. It should be without blemish. Amen. That's the way we ought to lift our family up. Help them grow in their gifts. Look at your kids and realize the gifts that they have. Amen. And let them grow in that. Amen. Push them in that. Let them know that you're behind them. Amen. I know we want our children to be all that God wants them to become. The Bible tells us that we're, we're to nurture them. Amen. We're to, to, to train them in the ways of God, in the admonition of God, in the exhortation of God that they're led in the will of God. And we must help our children become what He wants them to be. Did you hear what I said? Not what we want them to be but what he wants them to be amen if God wants them to be a a Christian truck driver amen then then by all means uh, we need to help them become what they should become if you've got a daughter that says I'd love to grow up one day and marry a man and have his children and be a great housewife then mamas you need to encourage that daughter to do just that Amen. amen let me just say this Sometimes we put a limit on what, what God can do, and we look at our family and we say, well, if my kid is this, he'll be successful. If my daughter does this, she'll be great. If my son does this, she'll be great. Don't put a limit on God. Amen. Don't think that this is maybe just this one area. If God's going to really move in my family, then this is where it's got to be at. God can open doors that you don't even know exist when you men give yourself to God. Open doors for your daughters, uh, open doors for your sons, uh, open doors for your family, uh, and you'll stand back and say, wow, I did not ever see that coming. I never knew that was able to happen. You know what happens uh, when you give yourself to God uh, and let God lift you up, uh, and you in turn lift your family up, uh, you watch what happens. Uh, God will get the glory, uh, and he'll do things in your home that you never thought would happen. Amen. Don't live vicariously through your children. <clears throat> I know of some good people over the years. A couple on my mind right now from, from, from years ago. They were my parents' age and raised kids about my age. And, and uh, because they didn't do things when they were a certain age, when their kids got, uh, got big enough, they pushed their kids into things that their kids really didn't want to be involved in because they never got to do it, and they lived vicariously through their children. Amen. God designed them to do something, and you are, are, are we as men, amen, and our wives ought to be the one to help them to grow in that, grow in their walk with him. When you help your kids grow in their walk with God, amen, I'm telling you, it will be to your benefit and your success. That's why the Bible says, and I'll preach it, amen, forever, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Amen. Train is a verb. It's not just telling them 
your lips, but it's showing them in your actions and everything you do. Train them. Amen. It'll never leave them. I know it's great. We need our children to get education. I'm all for it. Amen. It's a good thing to, to help them become financially secure. We should do that by all means. Amen. It's a good thing to leave them resources uh, that they can use after you leave this world. That's good. But I'm going to tell you something. If all you give your children is an inheritance of money and land and houses and you fail to give them Jesus, you failed them. I want you to hear me. If you give your children everything that this world has to offer, money and financial gain and everything you give them, and you fail to show them Jesus, then you failed. Because all of the things that you left them that are tangible, one day will be gone. They'll leave here. And if you fail to show them how to get out of this world alive into the next world alive, if you fail to show them that, then we failed. I failed. I'm not going to say you fail. I fail. We, we've all, if we don't fail, if I'm telling you, it's just that important. Give them godliness and teach them that the things of God are paramount. They are of the utmost importance. My wife come be getting us a song this morning. I want to read you something a friend of mine sent me this week. I really like it. It's called The Bridge Builder. It says, an old man going down a long highway came at the evening cold and gray to a chasm vast and deep and wide through which was flowing a sullen tide the old man crossed in the twilight dim that sullen stream had no fear to him when he turned but but he turned when safe on the other side and he built a bridge to span the divide old man said a fellow traveler near you're wasting strength building that bridge here. Your journey will end with the ending day. You'll never again cross this way. You've just crossed a chasm deep and wide. Why did you build that bridge at eventide? The builder lifted up his gray head. Good friend, in the path I have come, he said, there follows after me today a young man whose feet will pass this way. This chasm that might have been naught to me to that fair-haired young boy might a pitfall be. He too must cross in the twilight dim. My good friend, I'm building this bridge for him. When I look, sometimes at my children, there's times I'm sitting in my recliner. I look around the room. My wife's in her easy chair. All the kids are on the couches, and on the floor. And they're reading, doing things. And I look. And Bodie, I look at all my kids, my girls and my daughters, and there's a weight that settles on me in my living room, and I think, Wow. Will I be able to leave them? And, and, and I'll, I'll be honest, I begin to think carnally. Will I be able to leave them? If I should leave here, have I got things right? Have I got my life insurance right? Have I got things right that, that my family will be took care of? Should I get out of here? And then I begin to look around again and I say, have I raised them right? Have I taught them how to pray? Do they love Jesus? Do they love people? And sometimes people say, why do you do the things you do? Why do you live the way that you live? Why do you try to be as faithful as you try to be? Why do you seek after the will of God? Why do you encourage your kids? I'm building a bridge. There's a bridge. And I'm trying to my best to build a bridge. I know we can't build a bridge into heaven, but I'm trying to build a bridge to heaven. Does that make sense? I'm trying to build a bridge because I realize that I've had to go through some things just like my dad did. My dad went through things that were hard. His dad before him went through things that were hard. But there was a point in life that they built that bridge. And people around and said, why are you doing that? I, ha I, had, I had a family member. I'm just going to say it like this. I had a family member. 
that criticized my dad one time. Why do you take your kids to camp meeting everywhere? Why do you take them to youth camp everywhere? Why are you always on the road taking them to youth meetings and revivals? Why are you doing that? You ought to be taking your kids dove hunting. You ought to be taking your kids fishing. And daddy did. We've done those things. But daddy also took us to church more than he did anything else. And if I could, and, 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 and I look at that family member that said that, that had kids, and every one of those kids nowadays have been out of church, and some of them married two and three and four times, and, and they've got, I mean, it's, it's just, it's just, it's a mess. It really is. And that same guy, and I can just hear my dad, if he had anything, he never said it quite like this. I don't know that he ever really responded, but I can tell you this, if my dad would say anything, he'd say something just like his dad before him, and just like I'm saying, I'm building a bridge. There's those that are coming behind me that need to realize I've got to get over. Amen. And I've been through some hard times, and if I can do anything in this life to make it easier for my children, I'm going to do that. How many would agree with me and say the one thing dads want is for their kids to do and be better than they ever did. Can you agree? Don't we want that? We want our kids to do and be better than we ever were. Amen. I know there's, there's parents here today. Hey, some of you, you've been through divorces. You've been through all of those things. And I guarantee you that if we was the poll this morning, nobody wants to see their kids go through that. We don't ever want to see that. We want our kids to have great. You know why we have such a love for our kids? We want them to be better than we ever was. I look back at things that I did in my life and I think how stupid I was, how dumb I was to do those things. Lord, help me to make sure that my kids never, ever make those mistakes, but that they always, always live and walk. After you, amen. We got a generation that's going to follow us down a path. Are we going to be a role model? Are we going to be a role model? Or will we just fill our path with remorse? Stand with me all over the house this morning. It's important that we are role models. It's important that we follow after God. Father, I love you today. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you, God, that you have laid out everything just right for us to learn and to follow you. God, I pray today that this word will go forth and to touch hearts and lives. Speak to the men of this church. Speak to the fathers here. Lord, that we would be role models to everyone, especially of our own home and our own faith. Meet us this morning in this altar of prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Why don't I have the fathers this morning to step out? Come on. Come on, dads. Come on, step out first, dads. Men, come on, step out. Come on, men, that's it. Let's step out. Let's come up here. Let's find us a place at the front. Amen. If you got a dad up here this morning... Hey man, I think I'd come and I'd, I'd, I'd sit with my dad or I'd pray with my dad or I'd stand with my dad. I think that's what I want you to do. Families, if you got dad up here this morning, I want you to just come stand close to your dad this morning. Come on, let's come this morning. Let's find our place beside our dads. Let's put our hands on our dads and let's let dads know that we're with them. Hey Amen. How about it? Come on this morning. Hey Amen. All that will. Let's come pray with our dads this morning. <coughs> Oh, Father, come on, wives, come to your husbands. Children, come to your dads. Hallelujah. Oh, in the name of Jesus this morning. God, I pray over every family that's here today, every dad, every husband, every wife, every home. Oh, God, I believe, Lord, that you've ordained us, God, to be men of the home, Lord, and to be that, God. Lord, to be that standard, Lord. God, I pray this morning, God, over every family that's here at this altar. Lord, I pray, God, that you would move in their homes, Lord. God, I pray, God, that each and every home, Lord, that's here, Lord, that your spirit, Lord, would rest in that house. Lord, that you would help these men, God, as they be, become, Lord, and many of them have been loving and, and lifting and leaders, God. But, Lord, I pray with every passing day, God, that you would help these fathers, Lord, to stand up, God. Oh, God, and to be that leader and to be that God. Lord, those that are here this morning, Lord, that are not only fathers, but they're grandfathers. Lord, would you help 
them, God, as those grandchildren look to Grandpa and to Papa and to Granddaddy. Lord, that they look to them, God, oh, as they do their own fathers. Lord, that they look to you, God. Oh, God, that we look to you and we gain strength from you, Lord, because we realize that we cannot walk this life without your leadership, Jesus. Oh, God, it's you first, Lord. Then it's me, the Father. Then it's my wife. Then it's my children. Oh, God, help us, Lord, to follow the right chain of command, to follow the right anointing, God. Oh, God, I realize that when we go, Lord, like you said to go, Lord, when we teach our children, when we raise up, and when we lay down at night, God, when we're in the new day, God, oh, God, every waking point of our life, God, we would teach our children. We would love our children and our grandchildren. We would.